Hello guys, this is Brian here with a video about the Botox injections I had done for my chronic migraine two months ago. So it's two month mark. Today's Tuesday, December the 12th, 2017. I had the injections done back on October the 12th, so it's been two months obviously. And someone private messaged me and asked me to do a video about this, ask if it was painful and things like that. Uh, so to answer the question, was it painful? It's not virtually pain-free, uh, painless. Um, it, it's a little bit painful at the exact time when they insert the needle into your skin, obviously. Um, so I do recommend taking a pain pill and a muscle relaxer before you go, if you're able to. Um, but the next day, no. I was a little bit sore, so I took some Tylenol, and it was okay. Um, and afterwards you were sore, obviously, right afterwards. Um, so you, and you can't lay down afterwards. You can't lay down for two to three hours. Um, because apparently if you do lay down, like for instance, if you lay down your pillows like this, it, it moves the medicine around. Um, mine was covered by health, by Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, based on medical necessity. Because each insurance company does its own clinical guidelines for Botox injections for chronic migraines and maybe some may not even cover it. Um, Blue Cross does cover it and I did and I, while I was researching this before I had it done I was reading some people had it done by the primary care doctor. I would not recommend that. Uh, mine was done by a neurologist who treats migraines obviously. Um, to me Botox injections should not be done by a primary care doctor. Um, it kind of seems to me that it's kind of a little bit outside the skill sets almost. Um, I, I just think it needs to be done by a specialist. Um, because if they inject it wrong or too much, you can have some side effects. Uh, side effects are droopy eyelids because you know they inject it here and here uh, because it's also going down your neck. Uh, you can develop droopy neck syndrome, means your, your, your neck, you know, you can't sit your head straight up uh, because it's paralyzing nerves and muscle basically. Uh, that's what it, what's what it does. Um, I think I counted between 18 to 25 injections if I remember correctly. And there, uh, it, if I remember correctly, it was like maybe two to three in the little tiny spots, or a little bit more. Uh, they do some right here, 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 and they start going down the neck, the back of the head into the neck, and I think at the very bottom of the neck, a couple spots. Um... I thought the ones in the forehead would be the most painful. It wasn't. Actually, that was the less painful of the bunch. It was really painful right here in going towards the back of the head. Now, on the very bottom of the neck, it wasn't painful at all. Um, but um, I would have it done again, which I am. Um, and I do see a reduction of migraine headaches. I still get them though. Not as many. Um, and I kind of noticed the intensity is not as bad. Even once in a while I still have one, obviously. Um, but I am noticing that I'm taking less migraine medicine. Uh, so that's helpful. Helpful. And the doctor said, you know, so, so according to the FDA, I mean Botox's website, and you really notice a dramatic difference on the second treatment because what happens is it wears off. It wears, starts to wear off on the three, the three month mark. Um, and by the way, the reason why they do so many injections is because obviously it's not for cosmetic, so therefore they're not ejecting tons of it like they would if you were having Botox to get rid of wrinkles, obviously. So that's why they do a little tiny bit. It's not a whole bunch in one particular spot. Um, and it was like a needle, uh, insulin needle, or a small gauge needle. 
uh, the sting going in, uh, I don't think the medicine really, the, the actual Botox medicine, I, I don't think it's stinged. I think it was mainly, mainly from the needle. Uh, of course, I never had any needles on my face before, so that was a new experience, you, you know. Um, so, like I said, I would recommend taking a pain pill in a month or so if you're able to. Uh, I took mine, and the doctor said it was okay, because I was afraid I would move around. Um, I mean, who wouldn't, really? And, and I ultimately did a little bit crunch up, crunch up. I mean, who wouldn't have a when somebody sticking a needle in your forehead, you, you, you know. Um, it was less than 20 minutes in the office. Um, and went okay. Um, you just can't lay down afterwards. Um, that was the hard part. You can't get tired when you take a pain pill, mouse relaxer. Um, of course, I had a family member who drove me, you know, took me and drove me home. And luckily, it's just two miles down the road from where I live. Uh, two or three miles. Um, and my doctor trying to do this beginning this year, and Blue Cross said no, because I didn't meet all of the medical criteria. And I tell you how much it, what they charge the insurance company in second. Um, so you do, you, you, you do have to continue doing this, but at least three to four times a year every three months because it, it wears off. It's not permanent. Um, that's the only downside to that is it is you know you have to look at a certain you know you gotta take make a pros and cons list if you if you have chronic migraine. Do you want do you want to take less pills and less medication? and have this done, you know, um, also the cost, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta think about the cost, are you spending a whole bunch of money on prescriptions, and you can have this done, and, you know, you gotta waive your options, you know, make a pros and cons list, and, and, and waive your options about that, um, my insurance company did pay 100% uh, because I already met my out of pocket. But when I have it done in January or early February, I would have to pay this out of you know 20% out of my pocket. Um, so you know that's something you know you got to weigh the options for that too. You, you know, um, but you probably in order to get really good results, you, pro you it's going to take two two treatments. That's the only downside of, of, of this. Um, now, the doctor charged Blue Cross Blue Shield $1,775. And Blue Cross's contracted rate came back as $1,279. Uh, the doctor's fee was $123.39. And the Botox was $1,157.15. So the actual medicine was the most expensive part. Um, now each insurance company does it different, and each doctor does it differently on how. My particular doctor, uh, you know, some insurance companies may require the patient to get the medicine from a specialty pharmacy. My doctor did not. My doctor ordered it, and it came to the doctor's office once they got approval from the insurance company. So the medicine was shipped to the doctor's office. I don't know where it came from. You know what I'm saying. I, I, you know, I don't know if it, it came from the pharmacy or, or most likely it came from the manufacturer, obviously. Um, what I'm trying to say is I didn't have to get a prescription for it. it. It was, you know, it was shipped probably from the manufacturer directly to the doctor's office. Or they may have already had it on hand. Um, and, um, of course, you know, like I said, it does have to go through the medical review process. And I'll tell you what Blue Cross's medical policy is. Um, once the, you know, they called me, get the appointment set up, once they got approval letter, you know, of course, Blue Cross copies everybody on the approval letter. 
Um, so, you know, each doctor does it differently. Um, and if anyone wants to know about Blue Cross, I'll post a direct link to it, but it's, um, a lot of people don't know. You can actually go to your insurance company's website and look up the clinical guidelines or medical policies about certain things. I'll post a link to Blue Cross's one in a set, uh, down below. Their medical policy is called, uh, I don't know how you really pronounce it, let's just say Botox Toxin. Medical policy number RX501.019, revised November 2016. And it's like long, long, long. So I have to punch in the part for headache here. Okay, for chronic migraine, you have to get diagnosis. And I'm sure I'm butchering some of these words because I'm not a medical doctor, but Perfect, prof, uh, prophylaxis of headache in adult patients with chronic migraine when the following criteria is met. Initial six-month trial, typically one treatment every 12 weeks. Um, patient has been diagnosed with chronic migraine for at least three months. So you have to have big no diagnosed with chronic migraine for three months and... Migraine headaches last for four hours a day or longer uh, for 15 days per month. And migraine refractory to at least two migraine something. I have no word, no idea how to pronounce that. Medications from different classes, e.g. something antidepressants, anticonvulsants. Something, I don't know, <laughs> inhibitors, uh, receptor blockers, beta blockers, or calcium channel blockers. Uh, continue treatment beyond the initial six-month uh, six trial. Migraine headaches frequent, uh, frequency reduced by at least seven days per month compared to pre-treatment. Or migraine headaches duration reduced by... <clears throat> at least 100 hours per month compared to pre-treatment. So I will post that below. Because like I said, I'm butchering a lot of words in there because I'm not a medical professional by no means. Um, but each insurance company has its own clinical guidelines so they go by. <clears throat> uh, so I am going to have it done again if it's approved. Um... So probably sometime in January or February. Um, but, like I said, you got to waive your options. You know, do you want to continue to take a whole bunch of medicine? Or do you want to get relief? You know, there's a lot of options you go, you go waive. You know, there's those, you know, there's side effects, like I said. You know, there's, you know, there's a risk. Um... Doctor says for him is not very, you know, it's rare. It can happen. Any medical procedure you have done or any medicine that you take, there's always a risk. You know, you could be that old person out and have that um, side effect. Um, that's just part of medical science. You, you, you know, nothing's 100% foolproof. Not one, nothing is 100% guaranteed to work. You, you know, um, but I would recommend for somebody who has chronic migraine to have it done. See if you if you notice a, a difference. Um, so I would recommend it. But just don't go into this thinking, oh, it's going to be virtually pain-free at the medical, you know, at the time you have it done. Um, I, it did take me a couple of weeks for me to notice any kind of difference. So you, you're not going to feel it immediately. Um it does take a couple of weeks um, to know there's any difference. With me, it did. Um, so don't think you're going to have it done and the very next day, no more headaches. Ironically enough, one of the side effects is you can have a, a headache afterwards, obviously. So cause probably because you're tensing up your muscles, muscles and then you're getting needles placed in the muscles and all that, probably. Um, so if you do have any questions, comments, please post them below. I'll post Blue Cross's medical policy below and I will copy and paste all that mumble jumble. <laughs>
word mess. <laughs> um, so I talk to y'all later.